a meme is any unit of cultural information or a cultural artifact which can be transferred from person to person. This is usually done through our symbolic communication, our language, but it's not necessarily limited to that. Some examples of memes are jokes, ideas, beliefs, phrases, songs, words, uh, religious beliefs, political beliefs, technological artifacts, and so on. Meme theory relies on the three principles of the genetic algorithm, which are variation, replication, and some form of a selection pressure. Now, let's take a joke for an example. Um, if I were to tell you a joke, um, it might get replicated by you, it might not. However, th there'd be some essence of the joke that we could consider the same. That's not to say that there was specific neuronal similarities, but merely that the joke would be more or less the same, with perhaps some variation, which is the second principle. Variation might occur when you change the joke, you might forget certain bits of the joke, you might reinterpret it to the current social situation in which you were. Um, there'd also be a selection pressure on the joke. Um, you might have heard a lot of jokes that day, only those that were funny enough and good enough to remember, and um, ones that you could remember in the correct social context would be ones that would be copied again. If we studied this joke's history, we could perhaps see um, the joke branching off in diversity. One joke um, might become a slightly different joke at one point. We could perhaps see um, some jokes uh, developing over culture. A joke that's about one particular social group might be applied to another social group as the social environment changes. We might see some jokes going completely extinct because they don't fit in with um, current sociological trends. When analysing memes and trying to figure out which ones will be most successful, um, sometimes the meme's perspective is adopted. This isn't to say that they have wishes, beliefs or intentions of their own. We're not trying to anthropomorphise them, but merely to suggest that the meme selection does not happen at our level. Um, in his book, The Selfish Gene, Richard Dawkins explains how evolution doesn't happen at the level of the organism or the level of the social group, but rather at the level of the individual gene. The individual gene which will be most successful is the one that can replicate itself the most. It doesn't matter um, of the consequences it has on its host organism. The same can be said of memes. Some memes have absolutely no benefit to the host organism, yet they have massive reproductive success, so they are still successful replicators. A memeplex consists of a group of individual memes which are usually found in the same host organism. This is because they each benefit from being in the same memeplex as the other one. Uh, a biological analogy would be that the genes involved for being able to breathe underwater would increase their genetic success if they were in a host organism that had the genes involved to make it swim faster. Um, a mimetic example for this would be that the meme that condones killing all the Jews would have its uh, mimetic success increased if it was in a memeplex which uh, suggested that Jews were uh, genetically inferior. Similarly, the meme that says it's justifiable to die for Allah would benefit if it was in a host organism that had the idea Allah was great. Although most evolutionary psychologists accept that uh, culture has a very large role to play in human behaviour, they're not genetic determinists. However, there is a certain preconception that all behaviour operates within the confines of what has been beneficial to us in our evolutionary past. So all behaviour essentially has a genetic explanation. But there are certain things it fails to answer adequately, in my opinion, such as why are 
behaviours which are genetically disadvantageous to the organism still around, such as celibacy, suicide and homosexuality, they decrease the genetic success of the person that has those particular means or behaviours. Um, when, when you introduce two replicators into the situation, um, genes being selfish at the level of the gene and memes being selfish at their own level, it can answer those questions a little bit more adequately um, using uh, a gene meme coevolution. You can analyze the exponential uh, increase of the human brain and ability to um, understand language, perhaps was part of this meme gene coevolution. Some memes can propagate themselves by virtue of the fact that they can propagate other memes. History has shown us that memes which propagate other memes can be very successful. Examples of this include our spoken language, our written language, the printing press, and radio, television, and the internet. A meme fountain is basically a person that just emits quite a lot of memes or to quite a large number of people. Uh, meme, meme fountains uh, usually have quite a large social network or a large sphere of influence. They're also usually considered to be quite trustworthy, so the memes that they're telling or emitting will have that little extra weight to them. Um, some examples of meme fountains are academics, journalists, writers, actors, politicians, religious leaders, school teachers, and so on. Basically, anyone that um, gets their idea out to quite a large number of people. While it's true that you can't actually touch a meme or analyze it with as much rigor you would a piece of DNA, that's not the point. The point is that some ideas can be replicated from person to person. Those ideas might be subject to some form of variation, and furthermore ideas that will be replicated are subject to certain selection pressures. It doesn't matter that you can't touch a meme, because history has left us a fossil record. We can look at characteristics of certain memes that have been propagated throughout history, and see if we can try to analyse some of the causative factors involved. It doesn't matter that you can't touch a meme, because we can't touch beliefs either. For example, I don't go around accusing other people of not having beliefs because I cannot see them. But merely, both beliefs and memes serve as a useful construct of analysing the world, and hopefully they'll let us make a little bit more sense out of it. Peace.